Hey guys, how's it going? In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up Git so that you can make backups of your project. I've seen that a lot of you guys out there have uh, posted on Reddit and things that you've, you know, lost a project or a file has been corrupted and you've, you didn't make a backup. So obviously we don't want that to be happening. And um, Git is actually probably the best way for you to do a backup. Not only does it do backups, but you can also share your project and then at any time in the past, since it keeps a history of all the changes that you've made, you can actually go back and uh, reload old versions of your project. So maybe, you know, maybe something goes wrong, you can go back to a week ago or a month ago. So um, it's a little technical in the sense that you're going to have to download Git and you are going to have to set it up on your system, whether that is Mac or Windows. Um, now it's pretty easy, there's lots of tutorials out there that show you how to do this, so I'm not going to cover that in this video. I'm just going to assume that you have been able to set Git up and uh, I'm also going to post, I'll post you a couple of links in the, in the, in the description to show you uh, some good tutorials on how to do that and it really, it's not that hard, it should only take 5 or 10 minutes. So once you've done that you actually create a GitHub account on github.com and GitHub allows you to create um, a number of repositories a repository is going to be your game project for free uh, and also allows uh, i think it's two or three collaborators as well on that project so if you're working with another developer or a game an artist um, then you can have them use git as well and you can both work on the same project at the same time which is quite nice so here is my uh, github repository with some of my my github account with some of my repositories so the first thing you're going to want to do once you get a new GitHub account is create a new repository. Uh, for this, I'm going to create a new repository called Indie No No, and I'm just going to say um, contains the project for tutorials from the Indie No No YouTube channel. Uh, and I'll actually put it up here. I'll make this a public repository, and as I do tutorials, my plugins, uh, different things that we go through I'll put them up here so you've actually got some working code to to download so all you do here is it's going to be a public repository a couple of simple settings it's going to ask you for a couple of options you want to make that project public or private depending on whether you want other people to see it or be able to use it um, if it's private you can invite different collaborators someone you trust to come and do it so I'm going to make mine public but you may want to make yours private uh, make sure you click this button, initialize this repository with a readme. So this will just create a readme file so it explains what the repository is. And then once you click, there you go, it's created a new repository. And it gives you a couple of options as to how you want to um, work with this re repo. Uh, so what I'm going to have you do here is so you've got this URL here, which is this is your repository here. So if you just do, you can just copy that. And then from where you set up Git earlier, you want to go to um, the directory in which you want to actually uh, create your project folder. So obviously you may have your game project sitting on your computer at the moment. So don't worry about that. Just leave it where it is. So you want to go to the, to just go to a folder on your computer and then following the instructions from the Git tutorial that you followed earlier you want to type a git clone and then that URL and you can see what that's going to do is going to say cloning into your project name indie no no and it just gives me a warning but that's fine but if you look here it's actually now created the project so if I say in, if I look in that directory yes it is empty um, but it also contains files now for git to track changes and modifications to that so what you can do now is you can actually copy your existing RPG Maker project into that Git directory. So here is, in my case, here's my project. So I'm going to just copy that and I'm going to put it in that new Git directory. And what this means is now you've just added quite a lot of files, RPG Maker default project with, you know, without you adding any files, contains hundreds of files. So now what's going to happen is you've got your project folders in there and if you do if you type git status it's going to now suddenly see in red it shows you these all of these 
files that you just copied in. So this is your project. And these are untracked files. So it's saying the Git doesn't know anything about these. Your repository in GitHub doesn't know what it what that is. So what we want to do is we want to tell it about it. So for, to do this, you can do git add, and then you can tell it the files. And if you do star, it'll add everything that is under the root of the project. So this might take a, a second or two since there's so many files, but this is now adding them all in. Okay, and now if we type git status again, you'll see instead of being untracked files, it now gives this huge list. You can just see how many things come with an RPG Maker default project. But now it says changes to be committed. So it knows what these files are because we told it and it recognizes that these are all new files that you've just added to your project. So now that those are all in there, you can type git commit. And this will show you what's going to be committed. So commit means it's going to take all these files locally and copy them all up into your GitHub project out here. And then at the top, you want to actually write a comment. So for this, I'm just going to say first commit basic project or something like that. And typing comments helps you track over time the things you were doing. So it's easier to look through your project after many months and be like, oh, this is where I made this new feature. This is where I added this new map, things like that. So then you're going to do that and you'll see what it's done is it's now that that doesn't take very long. It's pretty immediate. And if you do get status now, it'll actually show nothing because everything is done. You've essentially said these are the new files that are in my project. This is the commit. But the way that Git works is, is it hasn't actually copied them up. So what you need to do now is you just need to type git push. And that is now going to push and actually upload your project to GitHub. Now this is going to take a little while um, in my experience on my uh, internet connection. It takes maybe five or 10 minutes. So once that's done, then uh, we will be able to look at the project in in GitHub, and I'll be able and I'll show you how you can then do small modifications, and obviously then with less files to upload, it's relatively quick to make changes. And then every single time that you work on your project, or every other time, you know, every now and then, um, you want to when you've done some significant work, you can repeat this process. You just do Git, you do you do a Git add, Git commit and a git push and you do those three things it'll keep a backup for you which is awesome and uh, it'll also keep a history so that again over time you can look back at your project and see things you did in the past okay so now we have successfully um, uploaded our project and you'll see if we do a git status here there's nothing nothing to see now in RPG maker Let's show you how this is going to work. So let's go and open our project that we just uploaded. This is it. Okay. So you can see this is a, just an empty project pretty much. So let's say that we add um, some new text to, let's add a new show text command, um, some new cool stuff. So obviously now you're working on your game, you're adding a new thing. Okay, great, you're gonna save it. And now when you go and you do a git status under the directory, you'll see that it now suddenly it recognizes that two files have been modified. It's map one and system. So map one, this is how RPG Maker, you know, under the underneath is writing to these files that represent your game. So it realizes that, that that something has changed. Now, if you can actually, if you want to, you can do a git diff, and that will show you what changed. It'll give you, it'll show you in red and green the difference. It's kind of difficult to see in RPG Maker because it's all flat and it's all JSON. Um, but it, what it's telling us here is that you know we just added that one little uh, show text command. So now, of course, you're going to want to make sure that you have that backed up so that when you come back in a day or two, if something goes wrong, you've got a copy that you can always refer back to. So the same thing, you just do the same stuff again. So you just say git add, and then with git, once it's added, now they'll be green instead of red. It, rec it recognizes these two files are modified, and it says that they're ready to be committed to the repository. 
So since they're ready to be committed, you type git commit and you can say here what you did. So in this case, we added a text message, which is pretty simple. And you put that and then you do a git push. And now, boom, uploaded. And it's now it's uploaded it to our repository. So if we go take a look at our repository on GitHub, you'll notice two things now. So what you'll see is it now recognizes that there have been two commits for this repository. Here's all the files we uploaded. Here is our readme file that we created. And if you click on the commits, you'll see we have two commits. We have the first commit we did, which was the full big upload of all the projects, which was 10 minutes ago. And then we also did that quick commit here where we just added a text message and it tells you what you did. So if you actually then go click on that, you can see what happened. It'll show you the difference between the files. And of course you can go to at any point in time, you can check out older versions of the files. If you wanna go back, you can, you know, that's the great thing about version control is it, is it gives you that flexibility to work with your project. If anybody wants to download your project, someone starts working with you, they can just come and they can just take this URL and if they clone it, i.e. copy it to their computer, then they will get the full current working copy of your project. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I realize it's a little, a uh, little bit of setup. It's going to take you, if you've never done it before and you're not used to this, it might take you an hour or two, but it's worth the effort um, from the perspective of not losing your project. One or two hours is nothing if you've been working on a game for months and then it gets corrupted and you can no longer work on it. So it really is worth it. So give it a go and uh, yeah, happy developing. So to summarize the steps for what you're going to do, you're going to create an account on GitHub first. And as you do that, you're then going to create an empty repository for your game project. Then you're going to download and set up Git on your computer. And once that's done, you will run a command git clone with the name of your repository and that will get your repository, your empty repository to your computer. And then you're going to copy your game project into that new directory. And finally, then you can run three git commands, which will push the files, upload them so that you now have a backup and you can work on your repository in the future and keep it backed up as you build your game. Please click subscribe if you like the channel and join me on twitch.tv where I'm regularly doing indie game development and game playthroughs. You can also check out my previous games and current development efforts on my website over at clear.games.com.